Exercise three is called Pyramid of Numbers. And the prompt, as you recall from a couple of videos ago, I had to ask ChatGPT to explain itself a bit. The prompt is, write a C program that uses nested for loops to print a pyramid of numbers. Um, now, what I'm gonna add is, uh, I generated this three videos ago, which was in my time, about half an hour ago or 20 minutes ago. I haven't tried to do this exercise yet. I, I guess I've thought about it a bit over the last 20 or 30 minutes, but I haven't tried to do it. Um, nested loop exercises require a pretty, usually quite a bit of fiddling around. It, it's not often easy to just generate a solution from start to finish. I'm gonna try tackling it and I might well need to fiddle around myself. And maybe it's that's an educational thing for you to watch me do. Um, if it takes me four hours, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll speed the video up or something. Um, and often with these exercises, you have to experiment a bit, not only to figure out what you're supposed to do, but also to try and get a feel for what you're being asked to do. Um, okay, so write a program that uses nested for loops um, to print a pyramid of numbers. And the height of the pyramid should be provided as a constant, and the program should go print the pyramid pattern based on that height. Now, as we saw a few videos ago, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever without an example. So I'm gonna go and I'll just go paste this in to, my, uh, to JupyterHub over here. Okay, um, and then as you'll recall a couple of videos ago, I asked ChatGPT to give me some context, to actually explain itself. So for exercise three, can you show me some examples? Okay, certainly, it's so enthusiastic. Here are some examples. Okay, there's the pyramid of height four. Okay, so hopefully you can, I think we get the general idea. If I asked you to draw this on paper, I think it would be very easy once you see these examples to do it. That does not mean it's easy to do um, in C code. It's gonna require quite a bit of, of um, fiddling around to get this to work, I think. Um, okay, and so there's the example with height five, and then there's the example with height three. So notice how when I give you a height value, you start counting at one, and the number of rows of the pyramid equals the height. Um, now, one thing I thought about a little bit um, while I was recording the other two exercises was that this can actually be a bit of a hassle, not just because of the difficulty of the programming, which, I mean, this is a challenging exercise, and I really encourage you, pause this video and see if you can go do it um, without seeing any of what I try. But there's also a difficulty of, it's really hard to duplicate other people's output if it's full of spaces, because you have to keep counting how many spaces there are by like highlighting them or something, which is a huge pain. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, can you rewrite those examples using, I'm gonna say, could you use the this character, the underscore character, instead of a space in the pyramid? I hope, I mean, it's pretty intelligent. It can figure out what I mean. So the idea is if I use the underscore character, maybe it's a little bit easier for me to figure out what it's asking. Of course, I can always go back later and use spaces. Actually, why don't we use, not underscores, let's use X characters, because it's easy to count how many X characters, uh, the, the, um, the X character. I'll put it in quotes. I'm trying to make sure it understands what I mean. Okay, this is, this is exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay, this is great. So here, if we look at the pyramid, I still want to print out the pyramid with spaces, but just so we can see how many uh, spaces we need, this version has replaced all the spaces with X characters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the pyramid of height five with spaces. So I'll copy that and bring it over here. So, okay, we'll say height five with spaces. And then I'll just put that, whoops, I'll, I'll I wanna put that here. Um, I'm gonna leave it unindented because obviously the spaces are important. Um, then I'm gonna go grab the same thing with the X character used instead because that way it's really easy. I think I'm gonna start by writing it to print out X characters and then just swapping that for spaces later on. Okay, so I'll do, I'm gonna unindent this. Um, I'll say height five with X instead of a space. All right, um, this is also helpful because depending on the way that your text is being displayed, spaces might not show up the same way. So the X character makes it really obvious how many things I want. Um, I won't paste in any of the other heights because I think we can agree that 
what they're going to look like. So that is, they're going to look like, um, if it was height four, it would look like this. If it's height three, it would look like this. Okay, this is a difficult exercise. And I really appreciate ChatGPT giving me this exercise because nested loop exercises are really hard to make up. Just a, a professional note on my end, I, I really have trouble making up good nested loop exercises that aren't ridiculously confusing. This one is only a little bit confusing. Um, okay, so if I want to make a variable to store the height. Int height. And I'm going to start with working with, I'm actually going to play with height 5 for a bit. And now the question is, how do I tackle this? So what do I do to make any progress on it at all? And this is something where your mileage may vary. There are a lot of different ways you can break a problem like this down. Um, and what makes these exercises so difficult is often not the actual code. It's a combination of two different things. The first issue is, um, I guess, uh, code writing hygiene or something. If you know how to write code in a way that you can make a little bit of progress at each step, you will eventually get to the answer. If instead you just sort of stare at it and hope that you get inspired, well, you might get inspired, but also nothing might happen. So you're taking a bit of a risk there. Um, there's also another factor which is a bit harder because it's something that not everybody can do in every case, which is in some cases you can notice a pattern forming, and if you notice the right pattern, the exercise becomes a little bit easier. Um, and I'm already beginning to see a bit of a pattern here. So if I look at the version with x's, one thing I'll notice is, um, look at that last row, 5x5x5x, five, x, five, x, okay, so it's five of the five character spaced with x's between them, okay. Um, and up here, there's four, four the numeral four four times with an x between it. And actually I realize that every row of the pyramid, once I know where the row starts, it's pretty easy to generate the entire row. I could write a loop to generate the whole row. And I think that's how I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to begin by generating a pyramid that just is every row by itself without all the centering. So I'm going to start by generating something like this. I'm going to start by generating this pyramid because I think that the thing I'm about to show off is a pretty, uh, a much easier nested loop exercise. I'm going to start by generating the row for one, then the row for two, then the row for three, then the row for four, then the row for five. And maybe if you look at this, you might begin to see how this is a lot easier to do. Now that we have, like, if we visualize the exercise this way, then this looks a lot like just a bunch of ordinary loops. And that's how I'm going to tackle it. Now, I'm going to hope that when I come back later, I can figure out a way of, you know, doing this sort of indentation. And in fact, it's going to look a lot like what I'm doing right now by hand. I'm just going to add a few extra spaces before each line. Okay, so I'll start with that. But actually, you could be looking at this and saying, how do I do that? Even that's a bit complicated. Okay, well, let's start by working on this the same way we work on any other loop. Let's come up with some code that we can copy and paste. And let's break this down until it is a, a simple enough problem that we can do something. And I think one thing that's simple is, can I just generate one row of this pyramid? We have to start somewhere. We can't just stare at this and hope to be inspired. Can I just generate one row of this pyramid? I'm going to try generating the row that goes with five. Generate the row for five. Okay, how does that work? Well, it looks like it's going to be a loop because I'm going to generate five space, five space, five space, five space, five. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I th and this is valid because we don't know where the spaces are. But if I wanted to, I could just generate five space, five space, five space, five space, five space. I'm going to start with that. So what I'm doing is just repeating five times the operation of printing out five and then a space. So I'm going to use, I'll use a for loop for that. I'll use for int i equals um, one, i is less than or equal to five, i plus plus. And then I'm going to print out, um, at each step, I'm going to print um, five space. And that's it. So here's a loop that counts to five for me. We've seen many loops that count by now, so I wrote that pretty quickly. And it just prints out five space. Let's see if it works. Um, we can, of course, ignore that warning. There it is. Now, I forgot to print out a new line, so maybe I'll do that. All right. Okay, hey, wait a minute, I, I did this. I, I printed the line for five. And now my question is, if you look at this, do you think it's pretty easy to print the row for four? I'd say it is. Let's try it. So I'm just gonna copy and paste my row for five, and I'm gonna swap all the four, the fives for fours. 
And you know what? I'm so confident, I, I'm actually going to try just skipping ahead and doing all of the other rows too. Notice how what I'm doing here is copying and pasting a loop. And remember, when we get to the point where we can copy and paste code, that's when another loop might come in handy. Okay, so here I do i goes up to 1. Here's the, That's the row for 1. Um, here's the row for 2. Here's the row for 3. And then there's the row for four. And it looks like a bit of a mess. Let's um, maybe add some spaces to make this less of a mess. All right. Um, and then we'll run this. And there it is. And you know, to be honest, and you might have the same experience I do, this big exercise, the original pyramid, now looks way easier to me. When I first looked at it, I, and I, I'm not joking, when I first saw JetGPT generate this, I thought, oh, wait a minute, am I going to be able to just come up with this during a video without making a complete fool of myself? Even I, because it could be that there's a lot of, a lot of thinking and sort of staring at the screen in silence that I have to do. If we can make a little bit of progress, maybe that's enough to give us, to push us the rest of the way. So now the question is, could I, I'm generating a pyramid of height five. Could I modify this to make this simple pyramid of any height I want? And it's pretty clear I'm doing something repetitive. So notice how, of course, I do the same loop for every level. What I change is this thing, which is how long the level is, and this thing, which is what number I'm printing out. Can I change this into something where I'm literally copying and pasting the same code with no changes? I think I've got an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this thing, so I'm going to call this the row number, because this is row number four. This is row number three. So I'm going to make a variable for row number. And it's going to start at one. All right, that's one of my ingredients of a loop, certainly, that I'm going to need later. And the loop that I use to generate the row, I now sub in the row number. Okay, so here I do uh, i is less than or equal to row number. And it's a bit tougher in the printf case. So in the printf case, I can't just write row number. I mean, I can write row number here. Let's see what happens if I do that. It just prints out the word row number. Okay, so obviously I can't do that. What I want to, instead of having the digit one in the text, what I want to do is sub in the value of row number. So I end up with this sort of odd looking printf statement. And I, I, I'm, I'm really loving this exercise. I, I would never have come up with this exercise. ChatGPT has done us all a great favor by making, by either inventing this exercise. I don't know if ChatGPT actually makes these up or if it just plagiarizes them from somewhere else, but whatever, I'm glad that it fed me this exercise. Okay, so now I've got this loop and I think, okay, this generates row number one. And then when I'm done, I could queue myself up for row number two. So row number equals row number plus one. And let's try an experiment. Let's see what happens if I take this exact thing and I copy and paste it. And we know that once we're literally verbatim copying and pasting the same code, we're one step away from actually having a loop. I'm going to paste it a whole bunch of times. There we go. That's a whole bunch of times. And it works pretty well. So it does, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and then something weird happens. So I don't think this is my problem. I think ChatGPT might have, this is something where the exercise, I don't know what we can do about this, but the pyramid doesn't seem to work very well if the numbers have two digits. So if I'm going to have more than 10 rows, I, I don't think there's anything I can do. I think the pyramid is going to look a little bit weird. Um, a more advanced version of this exercise might do something about the two digit case. I think for our purposes, for a 2D a nested loop exercise, if I can go up to pyramids of height nine using loops, that's pretty good. I think we'll call the exercise complete if I can go up to nine. Okay, but what I've been able to verify is certainly I can generate whatever row I want as long as I use um, this loop here. I just keep copying and pasting it. So that sounds like I've got now the body of a new loop. I could put this entire chunk of code inside of a loop, this code I was copying and pasting. Okay, wow, I did copy and paste that a bunch of times. Okay, so to generate a row, I do this this bit of code here. What I want to do now is generate a bunch of rows. In particular, I want to generate this number of rows. So I'll write, I think for this, I want to use a while loop. So while row number is less than or equal to my uh, height, I want to run this loop that generates the next row. So I'll try that out. We'll run that. And there it is. There's my pyramid of height five. Now, I haven't actually finished the exercise. This is only the easy pyramid, not the pyramid that's centered. Before I go forward, though, I want to do some testing. Because the more testing I do now, the more confident I can be that this code doesn't need to be modified. So I'm going to try testing it with a height four. 
Okay, and that works. I'm going to try testing it with, let's do height 2. And that also works. Um, let's try height 9. And as I said, I don't know what we're going to do about two-digit heights. Maybe I'll have time at the end to experiment with that, but I'm not sure how we adapt the exercise to that case. Um, okay, so it is, I, I'm pretty confident now that it is generating the pyramid for all, that it probably would work fine for all the heights between 1 and 9. And really, if I wanted to, I could test literally every other height. One thing I'll observe, though, is that if it can generate the one for height 9, it probably can do heights 8 and 7 as well, because it, that's part of generating the one of height 9. Okay, so now the question is, how do I deal with um, centering the pyramid? There are a couple of things, I, I need loose ends I have to tie up later. So one of them is, what if you don't agree that I'm allowed to have this extra space at the end of my row? Notice that at the end of each row, there's actually this extra space being printed. And we can verify that. If I print out the X's instead of, um, instead of the spaces, we can notice that the rows actually have an extra X at the end. And we could argue that that is sort of not what the exercise wants, because notice how in ChatGPT's version, it doesn't put an X at the end of the row. So that's a loose end I want to try and tie up in a minute. But first, I want to make the pyramid centered with the spaces. All right, so there we are, back to spaces. So the question is, what do I do to center the pyramid? Okay, well, here is my handmade version of the left-aligned pyramid. What do I do to center it? And I'm going to center it starting at the bottom. So at the bottom, do I need to modify row number five at all to center it? And the answer is no, I don't. Row number five is right up against the left-hand side, which is exactly what ChatGPT does. And notice how the first four in row number four is one space inland. So what I do here is I just, I don't know, to center it, I put one space. And then the three is a little bit above and to the right of the four. So I guess, I let's see, I do, for the four I did one space. And for the three, I guess I need one, two spaces. For the two, I need one, two, three spaces. For the one, I need one, two, three, four spaces. That seems like a pattern. And if I go up to the X version in ChatGPT, the ChatGPT provided, sure enough, there's four spaces before the one, three spaces before the two, two spaces before the three, one space before the four, and zero spaces before the five. And so I ask, is there, can I make up a formula that tells me the relationship between what row I'm on and how many spaces I need? Well, let's think about this. If the height is 5 and I'm on row number 1, I need 4 spaces. If the height is 5 and I am on row number 2, I need 3 spaces. If the height, I, maybe you're getting the idea. I could try and solve this, but I could observe that, hey, 5 minus 1 equals 4. 5 minus 2 equals 3. So that's my theory. The number of spaces I need is the height, which is 5, minus the current row number which in this case is 1 or 2 or something. Now, I could be wrong. That's a theory. I, I have no proof for that, but I could try it and see if it works. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to use height minus row number. That's the number of spaces that I need. And I'll observe that if I'm on row number 5, the height is 5, the row number is 5, so I need 0 spaces, which is correct. So height minus row number. And where do I put the spaces? I put them before any of the characters in the row. So here, inside the body of the loop, this is where I'm generating the current row. So it's the row with this number, row numbered, row number. Um, and so I want to generate the spaces here. Okay, so how many spaces do I need? I'm going to make a variable for that. Number of spaces. I'm going to make the variable inside the loop because the number of spaces I need changes depending on the row. And this is the loop that generates each row. So the number of spaces equals, well, my theory was it was height minus row number. So I guess all I need to do now is generate number of spaces, space characters. And that seems like a pretty simple for loop. So I just want to generate this number of space characters. So I'll make a variable. So int, I'll use i again. Int i equals 1. i is less than or equal to number of spaces. i plus plus. And then at each step, I just print out a space. And I could also print an x here to make sure that I'm not missing any detail. But I'm going to start with a space because it looks like down here the spaces have been showing up the way I expect them to. So I'll try this out. Uh, and I'm going to set height to 5 again. And there it is. Look at that. It's all it's already centered. It's fully centered. And this is a sign that maybe my theory of using height minus row number turned out to be correct. But we'll try for a few other heights. Maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe my theory only worked for the height 5. Let's try the height 7. And I haven't tested 7 by itself yet. 
Oh, that still works. What about the height nine? Nine, of course, being the largest height that makes any sense with the exercise as it is currently phrased. Okay, there's the height nine, okay. Um, and then I guess one more, we'll just try the height one. And notice how all the ones that have come out so far, it has looked like it has been centered. Okay, and so the pyramid of height one is just the number one by itself. That's not very interesting, but it's certainly reassuring to see that it works. Uh, all right, so I'm going to change my height back to five, and I believe the exercise is now complete. By the standard that was defined in the question, the exercise is now complete if we work with the space version. But you could be staring at this and wondering whether maybe I should, I have some things to explain. Like there are some other advanced versions, I don't know, the extra credit version of this exercise requires that we deal with two problems. So one of the problems is, what if I do X's instead of spaces? So if I change this space to an X and this space to an X, then I get this pyramid here. And you could look at this and say, well, technically, this isn't the correct answer to the question. Because if I look at ChatGPT's suggestion, there is no x at the end of each row. It doesn't make a difference if I'm using spaces, because a space at the end of each row is invisible, so you wouldn't see it. But if I use an x, it is visible. So what do I do? Um, I would argue for the space version, what I already have, what I had a minute ago, is correct. Because the exercise doesn't say there shouldn't be a space at the end of the row. In spaces, we understand spaces to be invisible. But if you do care and you want to know how to get rid of it, here is what I would do for that. I would observe that the problem is, because I'm always printing value, you know, number followed by the space, I have this problem of the last number at the end of the line is always followed by this extra space. So what I could do is end the line a little bit earlier and print out the last value by hand. In other words, what I do is I have I not go up to, uh, I don't print four, 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 four. I just print the first three of them and then I print out the last one by myself. So I have my loop run one iteration less. I have it go up to row number minus one. And then I print out the row number myself without a space afterwards at the end. In fact, I could combine that with my new line at the end of the row. This is an example of what's often called a fence post problem, where you have to pull one of the, the values out of the loop um, to uh, account for that. So I do that, um, where the, the loop by itself can't seem to t do everything you need, and so you have to split the loop up into multiple cases. Uh, okay, so we try that. And it looks like that worked. Um, so this, there's no extra x at the end of the row now. So I'm gonna swap back to using spaces instead of x's to verify that the pyramid does still look, it does still look nice. So we'll try that. All right, looks like, looks like it's good. So this is, the I think, the gold standard, whereas the previous version is correct by the standards we would use at this point in the course. If you're worried that I was technically cutting a corner or making an assumption, fine. Here's proof we can do it the, the absolutely correct way by being a little bit more diligent with our bookkeeping. Okay, so that's that loose end tied up. Okay, there's one more loose end, and this is a, a much more advanced version of the exercise, or at least it requires a bit more advanced thinking, but this is the kind of thing where when you see exercises that ChatGPT suggests, that's sort of the point. It's We've got to interpret what it's suggesting to us because it doesn't quite know what we want. Um, so I'm gonna try making a pyramid of height 15. Okay, and of course it's broken. Um, so what do we do? Now, the reason why it's broken, I mean, technically this pyramid is structurally sound, I mean, because this smaller pyramid sort of sitting on top of it. The question is, what do we do here? And I would argue that the reason it's broken is because our, our little alignment trick of doing row number followed by space gets ruined because some of the row numbers are, are two digits long. So I don't really know how to adapt this. Um, I guess I could ask ChatGPT to help me. Um, so let's, let's see what happens if I ask it that. Um, can you give some examples of pyramids uh, with height, or I'll just, I'll give it, an, can you give an example of uh, a pyramid with height 15? Let's see what it comes up with. Now it's still using the X's. Um, and actually what's interesting about this is, um, uh, okay, can you use spaces again? I mean, come on. The X's were good as a debugging technique, but I like the spaces. Now, what's interesting about this is um, you can, if you look at what's what it's coming up with, ChatGPT doesn't really doesn't really know how to solve this problem any more than I do. So it it's good for the pyramid up to height, I guess height eight, and then something something breaks. Uh, it doesn't know what's going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and gloat a bit here. Um, that pyramid is not aligned. <laughs> 
hope I, I hope I hope it doesn't it doesn't feel bad. Okay, I apologize for the misalignment. Here's a corrected version of the pyramid with a height of 15 using spaces. Okay. Behold, this is ChatGPT's idea of a pyramid. Okay, um, now I don't know about you, but I've seen a pyramid or two in my life. I, I have never been to the pyramids in person. I, I'll, I'll admit that. I've seen a pyramid or two in pictures, and I don't think that's a pyramid. So I don't think that's, it's good to be direct. I don't think that's a pyramid. I apologize. Okay, here's the pyramid again. Okay. Now, um, this is one of the, uh, this actually provides us a teachable moment. So um, those of you that might have been wondering, what are we going to do about this problem of AI taking all of our jobs? What's going to happen with my engineering degree if uh, an AI, if the engineers of the future are just computers that can do all the engineering for us? Let me ask you this question. Um, would you trust a ChatGPT to design a building for you? Because it looks like ChatGPT doesn't really understand basic concepts of structural integrity. There's, there's some like cantilevering happening there. Um, that's, that pyramid is, is still not aligned. Okay, we'll try again. I apologize for the repeated mistakes. You know, you sort of should at this point. <sighs> okay, well, uh, executive decision. It sounds like my new colleague, ChatGPT, doesn't really understand how pyramids work. So I guess I'm going to have to make up what we're going to do when we have two-digit row numbers. Because, as I said, ChatGPT can't do it. And if you were wondering whether ChatGPT is perfect and can replace human engineers, I think this is your answer. So what should I try? Well, one thing I could try doing is um, I notice that when I have two digits in my row number, the problem is that I'm only putting one space between each value. And in the previous pyramids where I have like, let's say height uh, row five and row six, notice how the five sits very nicely between the, uh, the two sixes because of that one space. That's impossible if the number is two digits long. So how about if I just use two spaces? Okay, so we'll try that out. Um, and if I do that, I get alignment that is a little bit better. But I might have made another mistake, which is maybe I need to put two spaces for my centering as well. Okay, and notice how this results in, um, there's 14, it sits very nicely above the 15s. There's 13, it sits very nicely above the 14s. There's 12, it sits very nicely above the 13s. So using those two spaces seems to have solved the problem where the pyramid sort of gets angled a bit towards the left because it allows there to be enough space between levels that um, these double digit levels can sit on top of each other. But then we've got this problem up here where notice how I've got two spaces between these twos, but the one just sits right there. Um, and similarly, I've got three spa two spaces between the threes, but then the two sits there. Um, and so I guess what I have to do is center a bit differently. Um, I think my pyramid, um, when, I'm, when I'm looking at the pyramid up to height nine, it looks a little bit sort of cumbersome, but I don't know if I can fix that. So in this example here, although this looks a little bit offset, notice how the eight is sitting sort of nicely um, between uh, the two nines below it. I mean, there are two spaces below the eight and the eight has to sit in only one of them. So it does end up leaning a little bit too far over. Um, so now the question is, what do I do to line things up a little bit better um, between the level with 10 and the level with nine? I'm willing to accept a certain amount of slanting happening up here, but what do I do with this level with 10. And so what I'm basically going to do to like as a way around this to, to try and figure out the problem is figure out whether there's some spacing that's not that isn't adding up. And I noticed that on every level I put two spaces between each number. So on row 11 there are two spaces, on row 7 there are two spaces. But the reason why things get sort of offset here, that might be because the number is taking up two digits here, but only one digit here. And so I do have an option for this. That's why this is an advanced exercise. Um, in printf, you are allowed to put a number between the percent %d to tell it how, many, how much space to use for the number. So percent %2d means use two digits. So represent the number using two characters. Um, and so and percent %3d would mean that I use three characters. So what I could do is force every number to be drawn with two characters. And by default, if you use percent %2d, so if I use percent %2d, and I'm printing out the number 9, it prints it as 
9. And it, it always uses two characters to print it out. And it just uses a space for the first character to fill in the blank. Um, I could also use this other thing, which is I could write percent zero two d which forces two digits to be used. And that means if there's an extra digit, it just uses a zero. So I'm going to use percent two d and see what happens. Now you can see this is obviously something you wouldn't be expected just to know. This is, this is something I happen to know that may come in handy, but it's not necessarily something that you'd be tested on. All right, so we'll try that out. And I stare at this, and actually, let's, let's just expand that to experience its glory. There we are. And that looks amazing. That looks beautiful. Notice how here the six is just nice and cozy directly between those two sevens. That looks absolutely wonderful. And you know, to be honest, I don't even think that some of that was my conscious um, doing. I think some of that I was just lucky that the, the series of random spacing changes I made just happened to work out to be so crisp. So I'm very proud of myself for that. I, I'll take all the credit one way or the other. So I have all the spacing. And I think that if you tried this yourself, you tried the advanced version of the exercise, you'd have to struggle with spacing for a bit. It might not be obvious to try a trick like this because this is sort of an advanced technique, um, but you could get it to work. And I'll observe that even if you got it to come out a little bit slanted looking, that was still quite a bit better than most of ChatGPT's various ideas. So ChatGPT had this one slanted version. I mean, the slanted problem, the slanted thing wasn't the problem. It's that all the other levels were sort of stuck against the left. Um, it also did this, where the pyramid would sort of fall over, or like this nine falls down, and that's a pretty heavy, pyramids are pretty heavy. Um, and then it, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Uh, so whatever you came up with for this exercise, odds are it was way better than whatever ChatGPT could come up with. And you know, I'll add, I gave ChatGPT a lot of chances. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, that's about enough for exercises on loops. Um, I think that's all the energy I have for loop exercises today. And so we'll come back next week with, with some exercises on our next topic, which is functions.